My name is Camden Long, and in today's live stream, I'm going to touch on all of your questions. So I've been getting a lot of great questions from a lot of great people on Instagram, Facebook Messenger, also on email, and on Palfish. So what I'm going to do real quickly in this live stream is answer all of your questions. So the last live stream that I did, it did not finish processing, and it was taken off my account. So I'm doing much better. You know, last week was pretty rough. It wasn't an easy week. But I rolled through the punches. I weathered the storm. And I got through everything despite what was going on on the outside world. And I was focused on what was going on on the inside. So just because you're going through a hard time doesn't mean you need to or allow that outside factor to totally take control of whatever's happening in your life and understand that it's okay to get angry. It's okay to be emotional and have feelings. We're human. We're not robotic cyborgs on binary code. So I just want everybody to know that because I did get a lot of messages from people saying, hey, your last live stream didn't work. What happened? Are you okay? And I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I just made that last live stream, which is no longer on my channel to show the transparency that not everything in life is rainbows, peaches, and cream. And anyone who's talking that everything is this utopia, well, they're not living the truth. They're not speaking the truth because you're gonna have to go through the challenges and the hurdles and the hurricanes, you know, the typhoons, in order to be at your best. Because if you're never challenged, you're not going to grow. And if there's not any conflict, then you can't learn how to mature under pressure. Okay, guys, so just remember that. Now, let me get down to business. Here we go. So I wanna say thank you to Sarah Jane. I appreciate your message on the Instagram. It's very, very helpful. So basically, I'm going to read all the comment on here first, and then I'll get to the, the my answer. So. She says, I hope you're doing well. I'm looking into applying to Powfish and came across your videos on YouTube and found them to be very helpful. I just wanted to start reaching out and making connections in the Powfish community and perhaps ask what are the keys to succeed to fill up your teaching schedule and get higher pay. So when it comes to that, you have to understand that opening up your schedule is the name of the game. If you're opening up your schedule between 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Beijing time, Monday to Sunday, seven days per week, then you're going to increase your chance, your probability of being booked with new students and having the students who have already had class with you, the regular students, to have a little consistency with their teacher, which can build the trust, which can build the relationship. So you have to remember about higher pay. If you're doing free talk, you need to go as low as you can. Usually, Palfish has a suggested rate. Go as low as you possibly can. Many people will say, Kim, that's terrible advice. Why would you tell people to go low as you can? Well, because a lot of people on free talk, not always, but many times they're students or adults or sometimes children. And free talk is a great way for people to get prices at a you know, reduced price for the lesson. With the official kids course, the parents have to buy the package and it's pretty expensive, you know? Um, so when you're doing free talk, the student doesn't have to buy the package. So they're looking for a teacher that who they can practice with, it might be five minutes, it might be 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Sometime I've had lessons free talk for two hours. Okay, so we have to remember that. And how to get higher pay? Well, you have to put in the work. So the first month, yes, go as low as you can on your rate. Why? Because more people will book lessons with you and you need as many teaching hours as you can, not only for your profile, for when people come and visit so that you hold credibility and value, but also you need the experience. You know, a lot of people out there, they criticize me on all kinds of platforms. And all I have to say is that I put in the work. When I got to Powfish, there was no official kids course. I had to self-market, I self-marketed myself, I listened to advice, and I took action on the advice. 
And also I've listened to my followers. I listened to the people who were coming to my live streams. I was starting to understand people skills and communication much better than I would if I had just wanted to do one lesson a day or two lessons a day or three lessons a day. But when I opened up my schedule, that's when everything started to flow in. So your free talk is a great opportunity for you to build up your hours so you have credibility on the app. And then at the same time, so you can build your experience. Because if you're starting from ground zero, you need to climb and keep going and to mature and to grow and to level up. So you got to put in the work. So I want to say another way, as I've mentioned so many times, video moments, so many, you know, you have to create content. Showing a picture of what you did during the day is great, you know, but don't expect all these pictures on your video moments to equal to more bookings and new students because nine times out of 10, it's not. The students who are on the Palfish app, when they go into a teacher's profile and they see a little Chinese, a little English, it makes them feel comfortable. And then when they click into the video, when your voice is projected, when you have a great appearance, you look clean cut, you know, like not like you just rolled out of bed. And the way that you're speaking, you're using your hands in the right way, the people who are watching that video will think, wow, the teacher has a clear voice, I can understand, doesn't speak too quickly. Wow, they have, you know, they're presenting themselves in a professional manner, right? And the content, what did the teacher say? How can I take what the teacher said not only in the video, but in the, in the description, because so many times it takes a lot of effort, you know, but in the video, the common mistakes that I would share with my, the, the viewers on Palfish, I would also put it in my description. And then I would encourage them to try to send a voice message in the comment section. And so many did, I couldn't even keep up with it. It was, it was too much to keep up with, you know, checking it all the time and listening to people's voice intro. But that is what brought about my huge transformation for teaching English online. And then of course, live stream. So live streams and video moments and opening up your schedule, all of those things are going to help you become more established on Palfish. And if you do a live stream once a week, it's pretty good. And if you can do that for a whole year, four times every month, that's consistency. But again, but again, if you do it for three months and then you say, oh, well, I don't have a lot of people coming, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this work for free and I'm not getting the bookings that I want, you know. Um, well, if you go for those three months and then you stop, which I did. When I got to Koh Tao in Thailand, my phone dropped, screen cracked, and it was, it was, you, it was not visible. You couldn't read anything or see anything on the screen. And it was like about a little over $200 for me to get it fixed. And at that time, I didn't even have a lot of money. You know, I had, I had to save every penny I had to, to survive, you know. And at the time, it was my girlfriend and we were together, you know. So I said, hey, look, forget about it. You know, I'm not, I, can't, I can't do the, the, the update. I can't get a new screen right now. So at that, time, at that moment, I was on the beach I was at this uh, the school center and I kind of went like off of the digital world for a little bit, like Facebook, Instagram, I just, my laptop, everything. I just got, it was, you know, I just put it on hold, right? I didn't completely forget about it, but I put it on hold and I just use video on Skype to keep in contact with my family, my mom, dad, and say hello to my brother. And that was about it. But then when I came back, from Malaysia, and I thought, wow, I, I felt so silly. I had, I had the money, but I didn't want to take a risk of getting the screen, a new screen, just to record and document, you know, my trip to Malaysia and look cool, right? And when I got back, I said, wow, I, I missed out on opportunities. I could have, there's so many things that I wanted to say during that trip that I could have gotten out to reach more people. So the next day, I got my screen fixed. I did a live stream of Cowfish, and then it was like, boom. The next day, I started getting calls. I started building up regular students. 
And at that time, I still didn't even have my video on 50, but maybe 50% of the time. So, you know, my transformation on Palfish has taken not a super long time, but there was a process. There was a process. I started April 2016, and I did not break $1,000 until November 2016, and just barely. And some people now are getting on breaking a thousand their first month, their second month, their third month. And hats off to you all. It's amazing. So people who want to criticize me for what I do by uploading all these videos on YouTube and helping out countless amounts of people out there and then still maintaining my normal schedule with online teaching and, you know, behind the scenes, my, my, my health, you know, my food, my exercise, everything, you know. So you got to also take pride in what you do. You don't have to be arrogant, but take pride in what you do because I've been beating myself up over, you know, getting blocked on the Facebook groups, you know, and just so many people, the gossip and the drama. And I, uh, it's just like, you know, so many people are looking to, to waste your time. I know it sounds like it's true. So many people out there want to, they're like these psychic vampires. You know, they want to suck your energy and then leave you dry. You know, you get what I'm saying? So real quick, got a lot of people commenting. Uh, T. Simon Gaudet, you're welcome for the reminder. Hello, Camden, thanks for posting. You just messaged me on Palfist, sent you a huge rant. Okay, Diablo Pawns. Uh, well, I'll just say your screen name is not very inviting. And Erica, how do you do free talk in Palfish? Okay, so very easy. Once you've been accepted and verified on the Palfish teacher application, I'll show you right now. Here we go. So you log in. Log in. Oh, can't show you my personal info. And then boom, right here. So if you click this button, oh man, this is a, I think I'm gonna have to flip it around. I can do this right here. So if you press this green button, then if you are ready to teach and you're, you know, it's an acquired environment, appropriate background, and you're presented well professionally, you just click that button, click the green, and then you can start teaching and people can call you. Now, if you have a lesson booked on Free Talk, you still have to click that button, and that shows that you are available, and then the student can click and then call you through the Palfish application. It's not through your phone. It's on the Palfish application, guys. Because some people have asked that. They're like, are they going to call my phone? I'm like, no, nah, dude. They're going to call you on the Palfish app. So here we go. Um, okay, again, Mr. Diablo. I just want to know, why do you, I don't know, I'm not trying to get into what people do in their, they have, everybody has the freedom to write what they want, but you got to think twice about your screen name, especially if you're a teacher, like, doesn't, doesn't have a great first impression. Okay, uh, also gives you experience in that nervousness and understanding Chinese accent, it's kind of unteachable, and just can learn with free talk experience. Well, I don't know about unteachable, but... Um, if you're talking about free talk, it is a great way to start to understand the common mistakes that a lot of Chinese English language learners are making, which is going to make you a better teacher. But then you have to apply the solutions, show them ways to improve, not just run your mouth. I'm running my mouth right now because I'm trying to explain things to you guys and I don't have you face to face one on one. So Jeremy says, with as many people who are joining Palfish, what's the reality of someone to get success? Well, again, this person, this one guy, um, I'm not going to say his name because he didn't want to do the, the testimonial for me. Right now, I have five teachers who sent me testimonial videos about how my videos have helped them become more successful teaching online and why they love Palfish. So that video is going to be compiled. And, you know, I, I, I message a lot of people, you know, and I look through my teacher referral list. And it wouldn't go back to 2018 and, you know, so I was like, oh man, so I couldn't even get access to like about 50 people. So anyway, 
Um, five people were generous enough to take one minute, two minutes to record a quick video. So thank you all for the people who have sent me a testimonial. And if you're interested in sending me a testimonial about how my videos have inspired you in any way, it doesn't have to be just about teaching, but if they've inspired you in any way, send me a 60 second video onto my Facebook Messenger. I'll save it and I'm going to compile it and upload it. And again, someone criticized me and said, you need to tell the teachers where you're going to post this and here, hold on a second. Uh, this is what I'm saying, I gotta get this stuff, this stuff off me because I'm tired of people trying to bring me down. So this person said, you basically need to let people know that you plan to use their videos in my advertisements. Come on, Camden Playfair. I didn't even respond to that. And it's not important because I'm, not, you know, me doing over 500 videos now on YouTube. And if I help someone get a, a job, you know, and someone is making income each month, and all I ask is for a one minute or two minute video, it's not asking a lot. It's really not asking a lot. So, and of course I tell people that I'm going to compile it and put it onto YouTube and social media platforms and so many teachers did respond back positively and I thank you, you all know who you are. I appreciate it, the five teachers who did. It was uh, four girls and one guy. So thank you so much. And again, if you're interested, let me know. So back to Jeremy, Jeremy is asking about the success. So this one teacher, I'm not, as I just said, I'm not going to mention his name, but he's only been on Powfish for three months. In the first month, he broke $1,000. So that's really impressive because again, it took me, it took me six, more than six months to break $1,000. And look where I am now, you know, I'm averaging over 4,000 a month as long as I want to go full time. You know, and a few months ago, I was at $2,005, $2,400 in one month, which is low because when I came out here, you know, I was going through a difficult time, you know, and I was reducing my hours. And then I started to realize that I don't need all this extra free time and it's not really good for me. It's not being productive. So then I boom, open up my full time schedule again. And within six weeks, you know, my schedule went from like 75 in my appointment. And right now it's at 234, you know? So it's pretty good from 75 appointments. And then I wanna, this message right here. So again, Jeremy, it's 100% positive. But again, a lot of people are going to teach online part-time. And that's just, what, that's just what they wanna do for two hours a day. And that's great. If that works for them, I respect that by all means. And there's some people who, really need or want to go full time. And the only way that you can be booked every single day full time is if you open up your schedule is you do the things that I'm talking about in all these videos. I repeat myself so much. <laughs> I really do. I repeat myself so much. I can't wait to start making some different videos about, you know, uh, what I do in a day, like exercise, how that can improve you and the food that I eat and, uh, a day in the life of an Eng online English teacher. I haven't done that in a long time. So there are some new content that I'm looking to be creative with, but right now I'm really trying to break it down for everybody because this is the summer of 2019. This is the high season right now. So if there's ever been a better time to become an online English teacher, it's right now. And not only is it right now, but the opportunity and the availability for you to get fully booked is the best time right now. So I don't wanna break it to anybody, but if you're one of those people who are saying, I'm not getting a lot of bookings, I'm not getting trial classes, I don't have full schedule, I'm open up every day, what's going on? You need to evaluate yourself. You need to look at your profile. You need to think about how you're instructing the students online in your lessons. And you need to get feedback. And again, if you're not booked, open up for free talk, not just for the official kids course. And if you don't want to open up for free talk, that shows that you're, you don't really care about teaching and learning how to become better teaking Chinese students. That's the, that's the cream of the crop right there. 
you know, if you're interested to do free talk and not just the official kids course, if you're not fully booked, then that just shows where your mind is at with online teaching. If you just want to do it and backpack around and look, backpacking around is great. Uh, again, I have respect for that because I was one of those myself, but now I'm a little bit more established. I like the house. I like living in the countryside. I got the wifey, you know, the housewife. Life is good. And that's what I'm into right now. And I don't want to be hopping all around trying to find my next hotel, my next apartment, my next lease agreement. None of that. It's so nice to be at a family house. It really, really is. So again, Jeremy, I think after the five minutes, I just ranted right there. Hopefully you were able to pick something up. Um, with as many people, okay, so, or not make pennies. And Jeremy, again, look, if you're, if teachers are doing good, then you get, you're getting, you know, half of your day full, or you're getting six lessons a day, eight lessons a day. And then, you know, if you're really good, you're going to start getting 12, you know, your voice presentation. You're not a copycat of all the other teachers. You have to learn how to bring your own authenticity and originality to the lesson. I've been teaching since I'm 15 years old, teaching swimming lessons, doing field experience hours from Indian River Community College, which is now State College, University of Central Florida, substitute teaching in multiple counties across two different states. That's the experience that I put in, you know, and I love my experience at all those schools, over 50 different schools that I did. I did it from kindergarten to 12th grade, I did music, art, you know, social science, everything. I love that. So many good memories, really, you know? And then I started to get my online teaching feet wet when I was about 22, 23 years old. It wasn't full time, it was like one time a week. And the people were paying me $30 per hour. They were from Colombia. And I met them through Berlitz while I was teaching, that's another thing, you know, if you're teaching abroad or if you're teaching online and you're, and you're in a different country, that's an awesome opportunity to develop yourself and to get those lessons with people who really want to learn with you. So let's keep going. There aren't enough teachers and that's how it will always be. Just keep working hard and the bookings will come. That's some good advice. Okay, great. JJS, why did you say goodbye to Thailand? Six years, that's a long time. Back in the US, okay. Well, I hope you're doing well, I really do. Okay, so Noah Flows. Hello, Noah, what do the kids on Poutfish typically want to learn? Great question. When it comes to the official kids course, you have the lesson plans and the materials ready for you. And then a lot of times you'll get a request on your schedule, you'll see it, okay? You gotta get tech savvy. You don't have to be a coder. I don't know how to make websites, I don't know how to code. But in 2015, 2016, when I had to sell my MacBook that I hadn't even finished paying off yet, and I borrowed that money from my dad, you know, all this, this you know, I come from humble beginnings. And when I had to sell my MacBook to get a bus ticket to Nicaragua, so that I could go to this island, I was forced to go on the smartphone 100%. And I had to do like little eBooks on my iPhone. It wasn't easy, but there's a learning curve. I used my phone for three years on Powfish. I don't know how I did it. And now I have an iPad. So it's another thing a lot of people ask. I don't know about tablets. I don't know about the Galaxy. I'm sorry, I don't know. What I do know is that iPad works great for me, okay? The, t the kids, they typically, again, they typically want to, it's not about what they want to learn. You know, it's about, you have to know what the kid needs or what that student needs. That's what it's really about. You know, sometimes when you do free talk, you might have a parent who has an article or a student that has something preparing, you know, like an assessment or a passage for their IELTS exam. And they, they, they'll come to you in the first minute and they say, hey, I need to learn this. I, I need help with this. Can you please look at this, you know? And then you'll know, just listen to them and then, you know, follow the process and provide the solution and help them and critique them and improve what they're doing. 
I did that a lot in the beginning and I was getting like $7 an hour, you know, under minimum wage, right? Again, humble beginnings. So when it comes to what kids want to learn, you have to know what the kid needs to learn. You have to know within that first minute, you try to get their age, you try to get their where they're from, and if they have brothers and sisters, you know, things like that, what they like to do. And if they can't get any of that information out, then you've got to start and see what they could do on the ABC, you know? And, you know, I have a lot of regular students built up and then sometimes I'll get out of like 12 classes, I'll have one new student or one really challenging student. And that's just to have that balance. And that's like the universe working, you know, it's not everything can be easy. And when I say easy, I mean that you built a great relationship with that student. So there's not any kind of like nervousness, you know, but you should be rising to the challenge also because just because they're a regular student, it doesn't mean that you can become complacent with that, right? And you've got to figure out, okay, well, they're doing a great job, but how can I keep raising, you know, their, their English abilities, right? So Noah, I hope that really helps. You know, I'm just being totally honest with you. Pronunciation, detailing, and different verbs, nouns, pronouns. Do you skip that part? Just go right into how to use the language? Well, there's really no way to how to use the language. I'm a very, like, Socratic. I love the Socratic method. You know, constant question throughout the lesson. And there's a time where... You know, they keep saying yes, they keep saying no, or I don't know. And then you got to write on the board in complete sentence. Yes, I do have. Yes, I do like, or yes, I like it. You've got to, because look, if they just say yes or no the whole time, the lesson's not going to go anywhere. They're not going to learn. And then it becomes frustrating for you because you're looking at, you already asked 10 questions and the timer's still at five minutes and you have no more questions to ask. You got to get on the whiteboard. You got to get on the whiteboard and write clear. You got to have good handwriting and then you can show them, yes, I do like it. And then the student can see it and they can start to get into a habit, a rhythm of answering in complete sentences because after a 25 minute lesson, if they've been answering in complete sentences, they could be you know, speaking an extra 100 words, 150 words per lesson. And then if you add that up, over one week, if they're doing that, you know, they're speaking over a thousand words per week extra just by answering complete sentences. And that is what's going to build the comprehension and their fluency. And then they can start explaining different things like what they like to do, what their favorite activities are in the summer. And then you can ask them more advanced questions. And then it's like, this is the dream teacher job. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I'm serious. Um, so again, you know, if you gotta go to the bait, you don't have to write verbs and nouns on the board. I'm not really into that. And then the whole phoneme alphabet, I've had two students show me that and I'm I'm being honest, like I've seen it before with TEFL certification, but it's so confusing. I don't even know how to read the phoneme alphabet. <laughs> I'm a native English speaker. So I tell my students not to bother with the phoneme alphabet, all these funny things like you see in the dictionary, how to pronounce stuff phonetically. Um, but it's confusing, number one. And when you're in conversation or even if you're reading, you don't have time to read something that you barely understand and then go back and look how to phonetically say it. No, language is learned through repetition and it's learned through constant exposure. And also you have to have a huge self-interest in learning a language. You know, the reason why I've been able to learn different languages like Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, Thai, is because I ask questions in their native language. And I don't understand what they say all the time back, but it's building the awareness, it's building the, the neurons and the connections in my brain to start to understand through my ears and the tones and the rhythms. You know, Asia is a different world than the Romance languages. Okay, guys, here we go. I'm having a good time on the live stream. Are you? I hope you are. Phone on the side, yes. Okay, time, Simon. Hope you're having a great day. Hey, what's up, Eric Nelson? I hope that you and your family are doing well. Send a prayer right now. Hope you guys are doing well. 
Thanks for joining. Erica, thank you, Camden. I am just waiting for some things I need to process so I completely apply to Powfish. Well, Erica, that's great. Make sure you have everything ready, your certification course completed, your certificate number. And again, here's a bonus, have five or 10 pictures that look professional of you, not sitting on the street drinking a beer or on the beach with a beer in your hand. I've seen that before and I'm like, even people who have personally used my referral link and then I'm like, it kind of gives me a bad name because they're using my referral link and then they got beer in their photos, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that, guys. What do you think? Do you think it's a good idea? Let me ask everybody out there, all these, all 10 people. By the way, if you like this, please give it a thumb up. Don't forget. Um, do you think it's a good idea to have a picture of you drinking alcohol and one of your pictures on a kid-friendly, family-friendly application, which is your job. You know, it's not like you're gonna walk into your office job in America and say, whoa, dude, I'm so hungover, to your boss, you know, because when you post something online, everybody in the company can see it. So, nobody thinks it's good or not good. Nobody answered, what's going on here, guys? You sleeping? Is it a good idea to put alcohol in your pictures when you're trying to become a teacher on Powfish. And if you got, look, another thing is, well, it does work for some people, but I think it's unnecessary to super emoji crop your face. And because a lot of times I go into teachers' profiles and I, you know, I have to become aware. I have to understand what, why people are successful and why they're not successful. What's going on with people? And I'm checking all kinds of people's profiles and I'm taking data up here to understand the whole reality and the whole market and realm of online teaching and abroad better and more clearly for myself and have more understanding. And when I see people that their profile photo looks like this and then in their photos they look like something different, it looks like a fake profile. It really, really does. So, you know, post normal photos of yourself for your profile photo, number one. And then when you're uploading photos on, you know, to your library and Palfish, put something like you're teaching in a classroom. Post pictures of your family. And if you don't have any classroom experience, if you have no family, put a picture of you with a beautiful mountain in the back or sunshine or happiness, something happy, something professional, you know, hold your camera on a, on a, put a water bottle, put your phone right here, put a nice jacket on and put something nice in the back and take a good professional photo of yourself and do that like 10 times, you know, not the same exact day, but in different locations. Okay. I'm just trying to give you guys some tips, like common sense tips. And I don't want to waste any more time. Um, that people are trying to waste my time. And I'm like, then I write messages to them. Look, so many people, it's just, it's crazy. It's really crazy. The amount of people that want to waste people's time in this world today. That's why it's so important for you to go out there and get it yourself. It's not selfish. It's not selfish. Don't do everything for money. Um, okay, so JJ left Thailand because he got tired of teaching English and missed home. Hadn't planned on six years, but it happened. I love Thailand, though. Well, that's cool. And JJ, thanks for writing. And I appreciate it because a lot of people, they don't like to write. Live chat it takes too much time. But thank you. Okay, Angel says, do you use an interactive board to explain lessons and apps like Kahoot, for example? How do you teach conversation? I don't know what Kahoot is, and I don't have an interactive board. I really solely rely on my voice. My, my voice projection, how to sync in my body language with my voice so that they're both in rhythm and, and, sync, and in sync. I have great questions. I have great photos. Look, you know, everybody's on their phone these days, right? So yes, it's great to have a tangible prop, like two chocolate bars. I've only had one kid who doesn't like it, you know, because he doesn't like to eat chocolate, and that's okay. But he was still impressed. And I have the bag with the open chocolate bar like right here, you see? And I take it out and, you know, you gotta show things, you gotta make the student 
feel like not just a, a friend, but a leader, a role model, an example to live by. But there has to be like this, this balance, right? Because when you start to have fun with your student, yes, it's building trust. Yes, they're coming back, but you're making a difference in that kid's life. And that's what really matters. You know, I have some kids, um, maybe they cried before the lesson, like screaming, crying, and then they get pushed right into the lesson, you know. Or one time, you know, it just happened two days ago with one of my regular students. And um, he, I could hear him crying in the back. It was like 10 seconds before the lesson start. And then one time the student was two minutes late and I can hear them crying and they didn't want to show their face. They had the phone like this. You can see the ceiling. And I said, hey, hey, go to the bathroom, you know, relax, take some time, you know, and they came right in. It's like, wow, you have a lot of, a lot of respect and credit to all the kids out there. Um, they're going through hard times and still they're coming in front of the screen with a stranger, you know, a person that they don't know in, in a foreign language, you know, so it can be intimidating. It's not always easy. And that's something I didn't realize even last year, you know, so Sometimes when you get complaints, it's for the best. I always believe everything happens for a reason. So um, if you do get a complaint, you have to be honest with yourself and move on and understand that if something happened like that, it's just there to make you a better teacher and don't allow your ego to get the best of you. So Angel, you got to have questions ready, clearly spoken. And, you know, for example, it doesn't matter. I'll show you this. Check this out. It doesn't matter. I've showed this so many times. I'll pull out both books for you guys. So these two books right here, and I'm not sponsored by them, okay? So I don't have a click link. I should. But anyway, um, these books right here are really helpful. I bought these in Chiang Mai at the shopping mall at Maya Mall. I bought these at Maya. And it's just really great. You know, there's so many... Like the pictures go along with the Chinese character and you know, here's the map. You got to know the cities and stuff like that. You got to be familiar with the geography. And then I'm really into it. I love learning. I love being proactive on my journey. And this is all my handwriting. I didn't have the teacher, didn't have anybody sitting down with me how to do this the right way. But every time I show it to the students, they say, wow, you did a really great job. And then, then one girl's like, Mm, it's okay. I think you need to have improvement. I'm like, this little seven-year-old girl is telling me that it's not good. It's like, okay, okay. You know? So again, if you have a new student and you show them that you have a book like this, boom! Instant connection. Instant connection. I'm so serious. And if you don't have like a Chinese book like this, then you're missing out not only for your own personal education and your own understanding and knowledge, but if you have a student who's at a very low level or even at a high level, it doesn't matter. You know, beginner, intermediate, advanced, it doesn't matter. What matters is if you show appreciation, you show an interest into their, uh-oh, my iPad's gonna die, I gotta get it charged up. Hope the live stream didn't get interrupted. Okay, I think we're good to go. When you show that interest with your student, they're gonna be so happy inside. And I think not even just the student, but the parents are gonna be really excited. As I mentioned in a previous video, think about it. If you're the student and you're learning Chinese for the first time, right? Let's just say you're from America and you're learning Chinese, right? And the, you're a little kid and the teacher, you know, your Chinese is not great. You know how to say a few things. Think about that different alphabet, oh, so many different factors which make it very difficult for new learners to pick up a new language. But then if you have a, a, a teacher, you know, when you're learning Chinese and that Chinese teacher shows you the, the USA map, it's like, wow, I know that, I know that. Okay, that's my state, that's my home. And then it like makes them feel a bit more relaxed. And, or if they show you a picture of your favorite food, or like a popular American food, like a hot dog or a cheeseburger. You know that there's an association right there from previous knowledge. And then you can build on that, right? It's about cognition. So there can be cognitive development through visual stimuli. Oh, that was good. Should have wrote that down. 
Anyway, let me get back to your messages, guys. Having fun. It's probably the best live stream, number-wise, that I've had. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so I'm going to finish these right here. And I didn't get to all the messages, but because um, you guys have been helping me out right here, giving me great content to talk about. So thank you so much. Okay, so if you have any more questions, get them in right now. Please get them in right now. Because I'm going to wrap this up, go eat my lunch, and then get ready for my next lessons. I have a student two times in a row. So I got to be ready to really, you know, for one, I mean, there's two separate official kids course lessons, but this kid's really advanced. So I got to be on my game. I got to be rested and fully charged to go. So get your questions in. I'm going to answer everybody right now. I always got confused. This is what JJS. I always got confused by some grammar even after teaching it for six years and having two bachelors. I know what you mean, JJ. And look, a lot of the students, some of them are like really stressed out about grammar and stuff. And I try to tell them, relax, you know, and that's a whole nother topic right there. In Ferrari, hi Camden. You are a great support for new teachers. Is this certificate good enough to start from International Open Academy? I noticed that many teachers have it. Yes, and I think Palfish um, pr not promotes them, but like they've, ref they've referred a lot of teachers to do that. I had to get it done. So the same company, the I IOA. I mean, I'm not going to digress into that, okay, guys? But just get it done. It has a certificate number. It's a legit certification. Jay-Z Millinery. Um... What is H no? JJ says, I was thin in Thailand and got fat again in America. I think online teaching would be a lot easier if you look thin. Um, I'll say this. So again, I study teacher profiles. I study what's going on in the scene. And I've seen teachers come from all different backgrounds, shapes, sizes, um, different places in the world, you know, and I've seen success everywhere. I mean that. Not everybody is extremely successful, even if you're a native English speaker. You've got to be a great teacher. That's what I try to tell people is like, I have a lot of people that I know from the Philippines who are teaching on Palfish and doing great. You know, people, my friend from Serbia, Alec, Alexander, hope you, hope you get that video to me soon, man, because I really want to show people proof that it's possible. I mean, non-native English speaker, he's been on there for two years, and he's so booked right now, he doesn't have time to send me a video. I know you got a minute, man. Come on. But, um, you know, again, uh, then, you know, over here in, in Thailand and in China, many of my students have said, you know, look, well, on, on the Palfish lessons, we have things like heavy, thin, you know, and then my students are to say fat. My wife says fat, and I try to tell her, I'm like, in America, it's not really great if you say fat. It's very offensive. You have to say overweight or obese. And, uh, hmm. and I try to explain it to her, and she doesn't understand. And she's just like, you know, she said that my wife says she's fat, and people call her fat. I'm like, you're not fat at all. You're like, I forget how much she weighs, but and by no means is she fat. She like is a little thick. You know, she's not like super skinny, you know, um, but <laughs> anyway, I just kind of went into a cultural thing, but JJ, <clears throat> I've seen people be successful and they've, you know, so people are going to try to criticize me and say, Camden's talking about teachers weights online live stream. Okay. Noah flows. I hear you, Camden. Thanks for under answering my questions. The stories you tell, the pictures and names that people create are hilarious. Names that people create. I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. No, it's it's beyond my imagination. I agree with you that your first and last name will be good. Yes. Absolutely. You're welcome, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Jay-Z, wow. What is wow? Wow. Lewis Isaac Nieto. Nice advice. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Angel, you're welcome. <clears throat> My voice is drying out. 
My question, do you use true from Scotty Kirk? And hey, Scotty, I saw your messages. I did see your messages. I just haven't had a time to, to get back. And that's why I wanted to create this live stream so everybody would get on here. So um, true G4 internet for your classes. If so, what package, how many gigs is one class? What is your expense per hour? Okay, so this is what I do. Before when I was in Chiang Mai, I had my condo and had a you know a router at the home and I didn't have a backup SIM card. Big mistake. Because so many times the power went out in Chiang Mai, I cannot believe it. I've only had the power go out one time here, but that's because it was like cyclone out here, you know? And then in 45 minutes, big truck came way out here in the village and was able to get the, the power back on. And, you know, my wife, that's why it's great to have a good partner, you know? She took my her phone and started in my car and started charging it in my car as a backup if the power didn't cut back on because I was on 9% left. So, uh, Scotty... I go to 7-Eleven and I pay, it was like $15. So it was like 550 baht when I started, like $15. And then uh, sometimes I have to, you know, phone, you know, use the phone, like, you know, not just on applications, but actually use the, like, the phone like minutes. And I don't understand all this stuff because you know, in America, it's already like pre-planned and I don't know anything about the SIM card game in America. It's been a long time since I've been in America too. So, but it's kind of like a monopoly, you know, the companies have everything like established and it's super expensive. They have unlimited data, I think in America, these phone companies, but here, you know, in Thailand and like Lao, I mean, I can just speak for those two countries. You can just go to like a, a little store and get a SIM card in your phone. You can do it at the airport here and it's like so easy. So I have an unlimited for $15 and I just pay every month like this month it was like 900 baht so like 27 dollars. so basically i'll just round it off again for the first six months it was like 15 dollars, and i don't know why exactly it went up and the people in 7-eleven they don't know either i think it's because when i make calls in thailand it charges extra but um just for you know 30 dollars. so i pay 30 dollars for my sim card every every time i just go back to 7-eleven and they put my phone number in, I pay for it, and it's done. So, Scotty, where'd you go up here? Okay. Yeah, I use a true, I mean, I don't know about true, like the company. So, again, I don't know if you're talking about true, because there's a true company out here in Thailand. It's a true, like, true move. So, I just use G4, G4, oh, sorry, 4G. And I don't know how many gigs is one class, and I don't know about the expense per hour. I really don't. Again, I just do everything, pay one time each month. Dave D, what's up, man? I don't know if you're still here, but awesome. So happy to see your message here. I'm like scrolling down and get to see your message. You can mention me, Camden. I will send you a video. You're doing fabulous. Keep up the amazing work, sir. Camden, valuable information, always helpful. Thank you so much, Dave. I really mean that. And, uh, you know, when you, you told me what happened, you know, in the past, right. And how you were able to overcome so many things and now you have this opportunity to teach online and, um, you know, don't forget to not only be proud of yourself, but to be grateful for how far you've come and how many people quit and give up and, you know, Life is tough sometimes. Life is sweet sometimes. But the more that we can keep going through those tough times, because tough times are not going to always last. You know, it's always it's not going to always be a flood outside or downpour. And then there's a time for it to get dry. And that's when you come out, you know. So your current, you know, your current situation doesn't have to become your forever circumstance, your forever situation. You know, nothing's forever. It's always changing. So it's all about attitude. Anyway, Dave, thank you so much. That's just kind of for everybody else out there. Uh, Jay-Z. Oh, okay. Wow was the Chinese books. Yeah, they're super helpful. Amazing icebreakers for new students. It really is. I messaged you on Facebook. You never replied. AJ Sagul Hamid. So please send me a message again. That's all you got to do. I must have just overlooked it. 
Anthony Clark. What's up, buddy? So crazy, right? Uh, my videos on YouTube, upload it because I like it. I enjoy it. It's fun helping people. And then uh, a Farong, another Farong here in Thailand. You know, he saw my videos and um, got on the Palfish. I've checked your, I've checked your profile too, Tony. You know, I've looked at your schedule. You got classes just about every day, pretty much when you open it up. And, and then, as my mom would say, lo and behold, I'm go driving into the city in Woody Rum at the like the only international supermarket in Woody Rum, and. He's pushing the shopping cart. And I'm like, oh, that's Tony. I know his face. And then uh, so crazy just to run into people, how you can change a life. And then two people from different countries are in a, both the same in the, in the same foreign country, you know, and then they just run into each other at the supermarket. It's crazy how the world works. But that's how you know everything is connected. Everything's connected. Everything has a purpose. So anyway, let's get back over here. You're welcome, Scotty, and uh, I'll try to get back to you officially on the comment section, too. All right, last one. Have you experienced any culture shock or losing touch with your American background living in a foreign country so long? JJ, great question. Where are you from, by the way? That's a great question. This is the last question I'm going to do because my nose is getting runny, my, mouth, my throat's getting dry, and I got to save myself for teaching later today. Illinois. All right, nice to know, Midwest. Okay, so that's what's been really tough lately. There's a lot of other factors that have been tough too, uh, not just financially, but you know, just it's, it's been really tough um, sometimes, you know? So now sometimes that like, I'm in a place where nobody speaks English besides my wife and uh, it's very different. It's very hot. There's air conditioning in my room, but there's not like a central AC unit in the living room area. So it's like, as soon as you walk out this door, it's like a sauna. Just, it is 100%. You sweat. When I have to go to the bathroom real quick, when I have a break between my lessons and I come back and my back's wet. I'm like, I was only outside like three minutes, you know? So, you know, but the cool thing is her family's been really great. You know, they don't get in my business. They just talk when I want to talk and because they don't know how to speak English either, you know, but I say hello to them. I offer them food. I'm really hospitable inside their home and I help them with things too. So, but to your cultural thing, it's when you don't hear your native language in a long time with someone who speaks your native language, it's like, it can be very frustrating. And then, I mean, it's cool. I like being the, uh, I don't want to say outsider, but it's always nice to go to a place where people don't know who you are, you know, where you're from and who you are. It's, it's refreshing. It's really refreshing. And then seeing how people um, take you in, you know, how they treat you, how they speak to you, you know, their behavior towards you. And that just gives you great, a lot of great perspective and understanding in the world. So I would definitely say that this has been the most difficult time in terms of feeling homesick being abroad for so long and not seeing my, you know, my mom and dad, my brother, like my immediate family, which I'm working towards that. There's a lot of stuff and expenses, you know, I'm working so much and that's why it's, it's really stressful, but I, 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 I'm just keeping my vision and I see that light on the other side of the tunnel and I know God's preparing me for something really great, really amazing. And I got to keep walking. I got to keep swimming. I can't drown. You know, it can't drown in the lame brain stuff. And it's, it's more than staying positive. Staying positive is just the start. But you have to do the action. You have to go out there and do it and put on that face regardless of how you felt before. And it's another thing when you're teaching online, you know, if you're in a relationship or something happened to you personally, you know, it isn't easy to snap yourself out of that because you're already online, indoors more, on screen more. So that's already been shown to have higher rates of unhappiness and lower serotonin and stuff like that. So that's why it's so important to get outside in the sun, sweat, exercise, move the body, get the blood flowing, and then balance that with online teaching. That's the really the only way to make it long-term successfully. And uh, 
So anyway, I can't wait to go back to America. I really can't. I'll probably stay for one week, you know, and I'll be documenting that all. And I'm not going without my wife. I want her to come, you know, going to have to get a tourist visa for her. But uh, it's like my dream to get her to come and see America and to understand the things that I'm talking about um, that doesn't exist here in Thailand. And then, you know, I love Thailand. There's many reasons why. I mean, you know, I'm right super close to the Chinese time zone. It's very relaxing here. And uh, there's not so much a huge surveillance state, you know, and then I live out here in the country. So got my garden, got my fruit trees, got a house. I have a great life, you know, and that's life. You know, there's conflict in that too sometimes, you know, and that's, again, it's going to make you a better person. All right, I'm seriously going to lose my voice, guys. Um, you know, what's really crazy, JJ, is I keep, I've met like five guys, no joke, that all have girlfriends or wives from Booty Ram, and it's no other province has been like that. So I don't know what that's about, but again, it's how things are so connected in our world is that when you start putting yourself out there, you know, God's going to deliver those people that you need to meet, even if it's just for a moment or a day or a conversation. It's that, that reaffirmation of having faith and to not quit on yourself. Very cool. Okay. You lived in Bangkok the whole time. Wow, man, that's rough. Six years in Bangkok, I couldn't do it. But Bangkok has a lot of opportunities. It does. It really does. You're welcome, Dave D. You're very welcome. Javon Dia says, yo, what's up? I'm chilling, man. Okay, clean laundry. I'm doing great. Uh, clean laundry is just finishing up the Tuffle course and her his or her <laughs> home country. I would really like to teach online. Now people are going to criticize you and say, oh, he read clean laundry and he said she, thinking that only women clean. He or she, okay, guys? I would really like to teach online eventually. However, would you recommend teaching in a classroom setting first? You know, I've talked about that a lot. And if you're just finishing your TEFL, and I don't know your age, but yeah, teach at a school. You know, you need that full experience. Like, again, I love teaching. So it's people who are just look just looking to travel and to teach and make money and to live a happy, healthy life, safe life, that's great. You know, that's awesome. I'm, I'm excited for you. I really am because I was there too, you know. Um, but I would definitely recommend to teach out of school. You know, even if you have a horrible experience, that horrible experience could teach you some life-changing um, lessons that's going to make you into a much, much stronger person. You need to be strong in this world. You really do here. I've been learning that all over again. So Angel just wants to know what countries have you been to before living in Thailand? So from Virginia, then moved to Florida, and then did a six month stay in Costa Rica with the host family, got my certifi TEFL certification, and then uh, stayed down there. And then I ran out of money. So there's another fellow out there who kind of happened. He's at the same age as I am. You know, this happened to me when I was 22, but I ran out of money and uh, I didn't even have enough money to get home. So my dad was super pissed, like super, super pissed, you know. Um, so he bought me a ticket and I had to come home and then I had to go back to school in Orlando. But uh, hey, we're all here to learn, you know. And if I didn't have someone to do that, to get that plane ticket, then I would have reached out to people. I would have had to teach lessons on the side, whatever I had to do to get that plane ticket. You got to have this relentless pursuit. You know, I've lived in my car for six months. It wasn't easy. And even though people in my family were willing to pay for like a one week, you know, these little rental hotels, you know, there's lots of places like that in Orlando and it's like really cheap. And I was like, nah, it's okay. Something inside of me was saying, like, I was very rebellious at that time in my life, but it taught me so much about myself and about the world and about the human spirit. And that if you have faith in your destiny, you know, for me, it's God. If you have faith in something bigger than yourself and bigger than this world, a higher power, it can help you stay focused. It can lead you into the right direction. 
can lead you into the right direction. Because if you have no purpose, you have no faith in anything, and you're just living like, um, you know, you don't have anything besides society to learn from, it's going to be very dark and shallow. And you can't, you can't come to your true potential when you're living in a mindset like that. And, you know, everybody's different. I hope that people are happy and healthy and safe and doing what they love to do. All right, here we go. Oh, so Angel, sorry. Costa Rica, six month host stay, host family stay was amazing. And then fast forward a few more years, I went back to Costa Rica, a little bit of time in Panama and then Nicaragua. And then I came back to Boulder, Colorado. And then I was in Hong Kong for one month and then Thailand. And of course, Laos, Laos and Malaysia and Sri Lanka. And that's it. Not a whole lot. You know, some people are out there, 26, 34 countries. But hey, I'm happy where I've been able to come. And I hope that you can find happiness in where you are too. You're very welcome. Clean laundry, all of your knowledge on your YouTube channel. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. It means a lot. It's going to take forever to upload this live stream too. How do you have the motivation to do YouTube's videos after teaching? So Gregor Bach, that's a lot of screen time and effort. Well done, Cam. Love the videos. They're insightful. I know. I don't even know how I'm doing it. Like, I think my vision is still okay. Uh, you know, I'm nearsightedness, so I can't really see far away. But up close, it's like crystal clear. You know, it's perfect. So, you know, over 10 years, I think, yeah, my vision has not gotten better, you know. But I realized that I am on the screen a lot. But what else am I going to do? You know, I mean, how much time can I spend out in the sun? How much time can I spend out in the garden? How much time can I spend exercising? You know, there's a balance for all that. But I know that the more I get in front of the screen, it's creating leverage because it's being uploaded and then anybody in the world can see it and listen to it and get influenced by it in a positive way to make a change. And that's what motivates me to keep coming back. That's what motivates me to keep coming back. So... It's like I had a great day teaching and maybe sometimes I don't want to upload a video. You know, I've been quiet this past week because I was going through a lot of tough stuff and I didn't feel like I was ready to come out and make a video, you know. So how do I find the motivation? It just comes from purpose. It comes from this vision that I have, you know. How amazing would it be if you had an extra thousand or two thousand dollars a month from doing things via social media and they're free platforms. You don't have to pay to get on them. Yes, there's a lot of censorship now. Yes, there's shadow banning. Yes, there's demonetization. All those things are happening right now. Big tech is trying to, you know, it really is. So, but at the same time, if I keep putting it out and then my dream one day does become fulfilled, you know, a thousand dollars extra every month on YouTube, that's, that's so crazy. That's a dream come true, you know, and then. Maybe some people's dream is to have one million dollars or one million subscribers. I don't want to get into all the details and the numbers, but it's like there is a motivational factor for helping people. And then, you know, the leverage that you're creating, the value you're creating in the world, what people will remember you by. And the money is just a bonus. That's all it is. The money is just a bonus. But, you know, when you've done so many videos like I have and other people out there, you should be getting paid for it if you're really making a difference in people's lives. And that's the new currency. That's the new currency is um, how, you inf how, you, how much value you can bring to someone is like generating currency. Because people will recommend other people to you. You know, for example, really quick, Airbnb. It's been like, it's over $200 now that I've gotten free on Airbnb. I've gotten over 300, maybe $400 from Payoneer for free from referrals. So like, it's not like I get $400 every month from that. You know, this month it was like four. So, okay, I got 125, uh, I got $125 for free. That's extra money. You know, be grateful for every dollar. I can enjoy that money. I could save that money. You know, there's so many things. So... There's so much motivation. It is really endless. 
And uh, okay, I gotta get off, guys. You're so welcome. How to invite people to my live show on Palfish at one click. Okay, big doll. So when you finish the live stream, Palfish will automatically take you to a page and says invite and share, okay? So when you click into it, I can't do it right now because I don't have a live, new live stream created. Just follow the, follow the steps. I, I really mean that. You've got to learn how to become better on screens with the, the new technology. Puffish has labeled it out all for you. When you finish creating a live stream, it automatically takes you to a page where you can share it to Palfish, you can share it to your students, you can click one, click, 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 arrow, click, arrow, click, arrow, and then boom, share it all in one click. So you gotta play around with it. Okay, big dogs, I know I'm kinda trying to go faster right now, but I got to. You talk of faith, and I would like to share an interesting topic to read now and then look up Mary Neal and Eben Alexander on YouTube, quite interesting. Thank you, Scotty, I appreciate that. I probably won't remember that unless you send it to me on my Facebook Messenger. Okay, Scotty, thank you though. I really appreciate it. I'm a guy, awesome. Thanks a lot for your input, Camden. Okay, clean laundry. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, Jevin, what's your suggestion? Scotty, you will really enjoy listening to Mary and Evan. Trust me. Look them up. Gotta go now. Have to teach class. I teach kindergarten for 10 years in Hua Hen. Wow, man, that's right. Okay, now I remember. That's so cool. You're in Hua Hen. My wife always wants to go to Hua Hen. Okay, Jevin, you should be a professor or a lecturer of these programs or open your own school. I think your experience and personality shows true leadership. Jevin, I'm, I'm super serious. Like some people said, hey, you should go into ministry. I had two people in China, one in Beijing said, hey, I'm gonna open up a studio for you. You're gonna start your own content creating studio in Beijing, China. I'll open up a school for you. I'll invest all in you. We have to make a contract. And then another person in Chengdu, in the Sichuan, Sichuan province of China, very close to Thailand. Again, I want to open up a school for you. My friend's an investor, he had three friends. We went on this mountain trip, it was super amazing. I got really sick though, I got really cold and sick. But uh, they wanted to open up a school with me, you know, and there really is a lot of opportunity that I could have taken early on. I could have done so many different things that would have been opening up economic opportunities, but Look, everybody's got their own mission. And when something doesn't feel right, when you know something really doesn't feel right, you don't want to get into it. And I've always realized that if my heart is not fully into it and I'm not fully dedicated to something and I do it just for the money, it's going to be a big regret. And then not only do you suffer, but all the people who trusted you, all the people who believed in you, you've let them down. And that's not a good feeling to have at the end of the day. So I don't know when that time will come. But again, I think that, again, this is what it's all about. You know, one day, maybe I get paid $1,000 to do a speech and talk to people, you know, how to live their dream, how to overcome difficulty, or write my own book. If I keep uploading these videos for free, and again, this kind of, it, again, it goes right back to you. Whatever you're doing on social media, all the different platforms, whatever you're doing, it's building the leverage. You're, br you're bringing yourself, your name, more credi credibility in the world. So then that's what people, people pay for, you know? All these people, they got a million subscribers. If they just write to like any hotel or a resort or whatever, hey, I got a million subscribers. My girlfriend and my wife and I, or my husband, my boyfriend and I, you know, or I alone, you know, I wanna come to your hotel, stay two nights or three nights. I have a million subscribers. Uh, we can do a promotional deal. Let's work out something. And they get to stay for free. So what I'm trying to tell you is, in today's world, if you are not established online in some shape, way, or format, not only are you missing out, but it's not going to be easy to have people believe in you. You know, because everybody's on their phone these days. Everybody. And I'm happy I took Gary V's advice. Okay, finishing it up right now. Again, Jevin, you just, you know, this is my, that's my dream. I would love to speak in front of people. I'd love to, but having a brick and mortar school, it's overhead cost right there. It becomes a liability. So I think the best thing is 
getting invited to do videos for people, getting invited um, to speak in front of people. Anyway, and again, you have, you know, I found out what I love to do. And that's why I, I keep doing these videos. Another feeling of motivation is so I want you guys to find out what you love to do. And at Steve Harvey, you know, he said, don't follow your passion, follow your gift. Please, if you took away anything from this entire live stream, remember to follow your gift, not your passions. Passions are great. You need to have passions, but you need to follow your gift. And if you don't know your gift, you got to try new things to find out. Again, Scotty, I won't be able to save that email because it's a live chat. You're welcome, Gregor. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's going to take some time, though, to get that one million. I know some people from Webster, Scotty. Um... Okay, great, Scotty. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yeah, JJ, you're right. You know, if I had a better wardrobe, if I was a little bit more professional with these videos and had a green screen and put more pictures in my video, switch to the picture or switch to the video of what I'm talking about, I know all that stuff's going to make it better. And I got the iPad. I need to start putting in more time. But again, it's like, I'm not losing focus because my focus, my priority is my students, you know, the online students that I have because YouTube's not paying the bills. And even if it was, I'm still responsible for those lessons that I have already opened and the students have booked. And I don't want to let the student down. So that's, again, my wife, she's like, don't worry about YouTube, you know, focus on Palfish. That's where you really need to be. YouTube is just something for fun that you can do on the side. And not only that's great to have in the ear, you know, from someone who loves and supports you, but it's the truth. And I know it too. And that's why it's great to follow something that you love to do, but you got to have priorities and understand what your priorities are. Um, offers are good, but in all God's time, bro, I brother... You keep believing in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I will keep you in my prayers. Jevin, Javon, I don't know where you're from, but thank you so much. Uh, I remember how much dressing up was important or in-person lessons in Thailand. Um, yeah, definitely. Personal appearance is it's crucial out here. The, uh, the advertisements and the, the beauty companies out here, like even for like water bottles, they got like super CGI face, like all over billboards and stuff just for water bottle companies out here. So um, the way you look and your appearance is really important out here. So awesome. You guys, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. If you need any questions answered, please leave them in the comment section. Once the live stream is finished uploading, I'm going to go eat, take a break. Get some sun in my eyes. I know that kind of sounds silly, but I'm, I need to get out in the outdoor light, you know? I've been, because it's super sunny. If I leave this open, then it's like a huge glare. You can't really see that well. But anyway, you guys, thanks so much. Have a great day. Take care of yourself. And if you have any questions, leave in the comment section. Don't forget the amazing links that are in my descriptions on all my videos for traveling Airbnb, and for getting started on Palfish and also a Panier referral link and also great Chinese resources, how to improve your listening skills and some Chinese expressions. It's all there in my description. So thank you so much. Adios.